Okay, so that's the Carl Gustav. You saw an impact. Yeah, and I heard dust. it. I'm seeing a side of Hawaii that most people never do. This land is sacred to Native Hawaiians, but the United States Army turned it into training grounds. After World War II, the Army obtained a 65-year lease for 30,000 acres from the state of Hawaii. The price? One dollar. What is your relationship to the Army right now? The reality is, it's pretty f up. Today, indigenous Hawaiians continue to see their sacred lands shot up, bombed, burned, and marched over. That's exactly what the military is all about. Desecrating, 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 desecrating. The Army's lease expires in 2029, and a fight is already brewing to get the land back. When is it going to stop? When are they going to realize that the Hawaiians have nothing left? I came to Hawaii to learn how the U.S. military took Native Hawaiian lands, what they've done to them, and what it'll take to get them back into indigenous hands. I'm on the big island in Hawaii, and we are about to get rare access inside the Pohakaloa training area. It's the largest training grounds for the U.S. military in the Pacific. The size of Pohakaloa training area is 210 square miles, which is, for comparison, almost exactly the size of Guam. Lieutenant Colonel Kevin Cronin is the commander of the Pohakaloa training area, or PTA. What PTA provides is the training opportunity to reach the highest levels of readiness. And you can do that at PTA mm -hmm. because of its size. To train on these types of munitions, you need room. And uh, PTA has that. Native Hawaiians, also known as Kanaka Maoli, have used this land for at least eight centuries. But following World War II, the Army started training here. Since then, they've dropped bombs from planes, launched rockets from helicopters, shot targets with mortars and artillery, and left behind unknown amounts of unexploded ordnance, meaning bombs or ammunition that didn't detonate after they were fired. Commander Cronin brought me to the live fire range to show me what the Army does at Pohakaloa. Tell me what we just heard right now, what we're seeing. The units on the ground training mm -hmm. are practicing their techniques and procedures for when they encounter the enemy. There's another one. This happens every day? It happens not, not necessarily every day, but pretty regularly. It must be a big task to go in and clean all that up. So for the, for the impact area where, where we're firing now, um, we, that's, we, we, let that, we let that be. Oh, the, it's never cleaned? The impact area is, is, the, is, uh, is left as it is when we fire in there. And that's for, that's for safety safety reasons. Does that mean like decades and decades and nobody goes in and picks the stuff up? Correct. Wow. To understand how the U.S. military became so entrenched in Hawaii, we have to go back to the 19th century. That's when the U.S. military began occupying island nations in the Pacific to establish itself as an imperial power in Asia. At the time, Hawaii was a sovereign kingdom, but in 1893, the U.S. military helped Anglo sugar plantation barons illegally overthrow Hawaii's Queen Lili'u Okalani. Five years later, the U.S. annexed Hawaii, and the military's footprint on the island chain began to grow. During World War II, Hawaii's position in the Pacific made it crucial to U.S. military strategy. And in 1964, the military secured a lease for 30,000 acres of land that they could train on for the next 65 years, all for one dollar. So they practically got it free. Oh, I can imagine, looking at Pocolo through their eyes, it's wasteland. It's large. This is my island. This is our island. What is the reason for all this bombing? Ku and Maxine are native Hawaiians who live 20 miles away from Pahakaloa. In 2014, they sued the state for failing to protect the environment there. We suspected that there was very little inspections going on. At trial, we found out yeah. in 50 years, they had <laughs> inspected the place two times, except that one of the reports was completely blank. So <laughs> it ended up being one inspection one in inspection. 50 years. In 50 years. How often were they supposed to be inspecting? They should have inspected at least 25 times, but no, only one time. In 2018, a Hawaii federal judge actually sided with them, saying that the state failed to malama aina, using the native Hawaiian words for land stewardship. He also ordered the army to clean up its mess of bombs. In 2020, 
29, when their lease is supposed to be terminated, they're supposed to have the place all cleaned up. Well, I think they're going to tell us they're not able to clean up, but it's too dangerous to clean up. Then that's what they're going to do. If we can't get that land, you're not going to get the land, Hawaiians. Oh yeah? We'll see. The military says they need to keep training in Pohakaloa for national security. What's your response? Well, for me, it's just the opposite. Instead of them being here to protect us, actually, we become part of the target. We're expendable. The military trained people on 130-something thousand acres. You send them to war, and half of them come home dead and without limbs. So how is it efficient? I lost two brothers in Vietnam. And this is why I'm here. So I swore I will fight the military no matter what because of my two brothers. So what's important? Our land. Our land is important. What is the Army's relationship with Native Hawaiians here? Here at, at PTA, we have a, a strong relationship with Native Hawaiians. We, uh, we have the utmost respect for the community here, the culture and the history. There are some Native Hawaiians who say that this is their sacred land and that the army being here has desecrated and polluted it. How do you respond to that? I, I understand their concerns and I listen to them and, um, and you know, I, you know I, again, I you know, communicate with them with humility to, to develop that increased understanding. To them, these are sacred lands, and yet here we are seeing them getting blown up. I would just say again, we're, you know, we're training here to achieve the highest levels of, of readiness for our nation's men and women. And, and what we can do here at Pohakaloa Training Area can't be replicated in the state of Hawaii. The campaign to take Hawaiian land back from the U.S. military started in the 1970s with the fight over the island of Kaha'alawe. The Navy had turned the island into a bombing range in 1941, following Japan's attack on Pearl Harbor, and virtually destroyed the island's ecosystem. She is not a barren rock that should be used as a target for military bombing practices in the name of national defense. After decades of pressure, the Navy withdrew in 1994. <laughs> The fight for Kaha'olawe inspired many Kanaka Maoli to reclaim their traditions and their lands. Like here in the Makua Valley on the island of Oahu. Generations of Native Hawaiians lived here up until the 1940s, when the U.S. Army forced the 3,000 residents to leave so it could use the land for target practice. Not only is this valley incredibly beautiful, you can feel that it's also profoundly spiritual. And to think that it was just a matter of years ago that the U.S. Army was actively bombing it, it's, it's hard to imagine. Activists with the group Malama Makua sued the Army and in 2004 successfully got it to stop live fire training here. Now the group is allowed to visit the valley, but only twice a month. So the group has to walk behind this representative from the military who first has to scan the area for potential unexploded ordnance. We appreciate access into this valley, but we don't appreciate the fact that we have to ask permission to be in this valley. What is your relationship to the Army right now? The reality is, it's pretty f***ed up. Sorry for the swearing, but it's not like um, we're all best friends. The Army promised they would return the land after World War II ended. Instead, they formally secured it in that $1 lease. I think it's symbolic of how the Army and all the military works. Once they're in, they don't really want to leave. There were thousands of people living here before the Army kicked them out. Where did they go and how does that impact this space? They got scattered all over the place or they died. And so there are family members living everywhere. We will be searching for those descendants because they have something to say as well. This was their family land. This is actually my great-great-grandfather. This is a photo of the property that once he once lived on. Nathan recently learned that his great-great-grandfather used to live in the Makua Valley. How did it feel to learn that you like directly descend from this place, this land? Honest truth is excitement and scared at the same time. Why scared? So now that I know that they lived here, now it's my responsibility being a descendant to take care of the land that they once lived on. And that's how the land works, you know. It's passed on generation to generation, and everybody's job that lives there is to take care of that place. Is two days a month enough? Nope. 
not enough. I try to come down here at least seven days a week. I'm always outside the gate, two days out of the month, then I get to come inside the gate, legally. What are you doing when you're just outside the gate? Um, I spend a lot of time at the beach side, um, listening to the valley, listening to nature, because sometimes if you come down here at night, when the breezes come through the valley, you can actually hear, hear voices, hear things. It's kind of like, imagine what life would be like back in those days. So many generations of people who have lived and died in this valley are still here. This, this whole valley has life. We think the valley is waving at us all the time. Every time we drive by, it's kind of like, look, look at me, don't forget me, help me. So come 2029, do you think the Army's still gonna be training in Pohakaloa? Damn right. They're gonna keep doing it, unless we get rid of them and bring our land back. You need to leave. Leave quietly, give us back the land, clean it up, go home. Go home already. Hey guys, it's Dina in the Makua Valley. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments and be sure to check out our entire series looking at the U.S. military's footprint here in Hawaii.